Hi, this is Pris here in uh, quarantine land <laughs> of California. And I've been terribly negligent about sharing on YouTube. Um, first, it was because I was just so busy caring for my little charge. But uh, also tired and, and dealing with some physical things. And then... Um, now, and now the coronavirus has afforded me some time to rest. Um, and there's been some words that I felt were really important to share. Uh, I'm just going to start with one <clears throat> that I got yesterday. And then I'll, I'm going to try and post a few more that I felt were important words to share. At any rate, uh, yesterday some somebody had written to me. <clears throat> who I know from years past and who's been <clears throat> very critical of the church. And it's, um, I've heard the same stories over and over and over again, so I have a hard time <clears throat> listening to them over and over again. And um, she said, anyone who preaches revival is a heretic and are preaching the wrong gospel. And that got my dander up. So I'm thinking about it and, you know, how do I respond, you know, to this? Because this is someone who used to know me fairly well. And it's like when you get this kind of thing, it's like, well, gee, has, it, has anything I've said gone through to, <laughs> to this person, you know, and apparently it hasn't. So uh, I thought, I don't know, you know, how to respond. And then I decided, well, you know, since 1989, the Lord's been speaking to me about coming awakening. Okay. And immediately I wrote back to her and said that God said that the revival is coming in the one another's, which is true. He told me it's not going to be like people think or expect it, but in the midst of persecution and judgments. And those have started all over the world. You know, it's been going on for, for a few years. So it's escalated, especially in this last year. And there's a couple of guys called... Um, Two Preachers, if you look them up on, you, on YouTube, and they have a compilation of all these different disasters all over the world, and they're not even showing all of them. They're just showing, you know, portions of them, and it's pretty amazing, and they even had a, um, a graph of the incremental increase in these things, so that it's not Somebody might say to you, oh, this has always gone on, but no, not at this rate, it hasn't. So um, I think those guys are kind of good to watch because we don't get any of that on the news, and um, I don't even have the TV on anymore. I couldn't handle it anymore, and it's kind of good because it gives me more time with the Lord. Anyway, I wrote her back. I said what I did. And then I thought, well, I could start, you know, showing places where he showed me. And then I, no, I'm not going to do that. And the Lord began to speak. And he said, the early church had revival in the midst of persecution. The early church suddenly was attacked by the religious order. We know that, right? My thoughts went back to the movie about the Apostle John uh, on Patmos, you know, that um, I think TBN did it. I'm not sure, but I know they showed it. And how many of us are willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel? You know, that's not a gospel that's been talked about in the recent church. Everybody just wants money and worldly things, but they haven't always um, taught that if you want the glory that you have to suffer with him, you know, as the scriptures say. So... This is uh, 
just sad state of affairs for the church because so many are comfortable here in America and um, they've thought, you know, everything's going to keep going on the way it has. And at this point, nothing's ever going to be the same. That's that's the truth of it because of what's behind all of this. You know, people are thinking about the coronavirus, but um, that's not all that's going on. And people who are aware on YouTube and who use, you know, other for, um, forms of news other than the mainstream media are aware that there's more going on than than what the mainstream is showing, of course. There's Then the Lord said, terrible things are planned by the wicked and you must put on me. Come to me in the secret place. I'll fill you with all you need. Stop any striving and keep your eyes on me for I love you as no other loves you. Rest in my arms of safety. Praise and worship for I will overwhelm you with my love and mercy and you will be changed. Pray for your family, brothers and sisters in the world, but cover your cities and your states and provinces with the blood of my son. Take authority in the area you live in. Pray for the saints and the elect. Um, and I'm purposely saying elect because there's some people who have unsanctified mercy, who think God shouldn't judge anybody, who, you know, obviously God is grieved by having to bring judgment, you know? He doesn't delight in in having to do it any more than a parent delights in in um, spanking their child for something or, you know, that they've done wrong. And nobody delights in doing that unless they're warped. So God, in his mercy, is trying to get people's attention. And there have been all kinds of signs. So I'm just kind of ad-libbing here as I go along <laughs> with what God is saying, but trying to explain. Um, pray for, for your area especially. If everybody does that, then it's, it's really awesome. Take authority over the air, he said. Take authority over the misdeeds of men and demons. Repent for them, but take authority over the wickedness and the deeds they've planned. Pray a shield of fire around you and your loved ones. For I will destroy their wicked plans because they have not looked to me, the author of peace, the author of hope, the author of love, the author of life. I am the great physician. I am the creator God who made the heavens and the earth and all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? The martyr's blood is crying out to me and I will avenge all wickedness. So cry out for the souls of the elect now, for I will save nations in a day, which is scriptural, Isaiah. Hallelujah. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day or can a nation be brought forth in a moment? As soon as Zion was in labor, she also brought forth her sons. Hallelujah. Shall I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Ho, oh, or shall I who gives delivery shut the womb, says your God? Rejoice with Jerusalem. Ha, ha, ha. And be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice greatly with her, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied with her comforting breasts. Ho, hey, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with her bountiful bosom. For the Lord says this, Behold, I extend peace to her. Jerusalem, I'm reading from um, the Amplified, original Amplified like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream, and you will be nursed, you'll be carried on her hip, and playfully rocked on her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice, your bones will flourish like new grass, and the powerful hand of the Lord will be revealed to his servants. But his indignation will be towards his enemies. Remember that. It's not towards those who are saved, or those who are elect. It is towards those who are his enemies. Only this time we will do greater things um, seen through many ages. His glory will be seen upon you like Moses. And um, there are people who have seen this. I remember 
um, a man who had a dream. Um, this is a little bit vague in my mind, but I remember this part be because of the scripture from Isaiah 60, where it says the, um, the earth will be filled with darkness and the people deep darkness, but the Lord will rise over you and be seen over you. And in this dream, this man saw <clears throat> that there were people who shone, their faces shone, and um, <clears throat> they couldn't go outdoors a lot because of that, <laughs> because people knew, you know, right away would gravitate towards them because of um, the glory of the Lord on them. And I think he he called them something like the fiery ones or, oh, the shining ones. That's it. In the dream, he called them the shining ones. And so this scripture in Isaiah, some people don't take as literal, but it is. In Azusa Street, they saw fire on the, on the top of the building where they were meeting to the point where people called the fire department thinking it was a real fire, but it was the fire of God. There was no actual fire in the building. And people also had fire on their heads, just like Pentecost, okay? So it's coming. It's at hand. Because the Lord knows what they're doing behind the scenes. The Lord knows everything that's going on that's not being told in the news. And he's playing his trump card, as I saw this morning in a prophecy, um, that somebody else talked about. And um, God had said that very phrase to me as well in a script, in a word that he had given me. He had talked about playing the trump card. So thank you for listening and um, be encouraged that God is with you and will protect you. And and keep praying, keep worshiping, um, especially because the presence comes in the middle of worship, right? The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And he is changing us. He is. And he's healing us. So God bless you. <laughs>